Let's pray again as we get into the 14th article of the Baptist Faith and Message together to see what we might be encouraged by and glean from as it relates to our church doctrine. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for just another opportunity to gather this evening, and thank you for another opportunity to glean truths from your word, to be strengthened and bolstered in the faith, to grow in our knowledge and understanding of what you've revealed so that we might grow, so that we might glorify you in everything that we do, that you would create unity even in our beliefs. Lord, in a world that's so divided, with so many opinions, with so many thoughts going on, messages being proclaimed all over the place, help us as a church, to be a city on a hill, light, salt, that we might be the kind of gospel influences, Lord, that you're calling us to be. Use our time together, as always, to build us up in these things. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, team sports really illustrate how essential each part of a team actually is, each player. For those Chiefs fans in here, I hope your team, our church team, fares better than my Chargers. Uh, last night, if you watched that game, it was a collapse of a team. It was a tough one to watch for me, as you could imagine. In fact, I, I received condolences from many friends and members here as it relates to that, but now I'm full on board rooting on the Chiefs for next week, but you see what the Chiefs need, just like whatever every team needs, is a kind of unity and cooperation going in the same direction together. They're better than just one. Even the best athlete on a team pales in comparison to, to all the parts. This is so important. We recognize that. Even in Olympic individual events that, that we see every couple years, even those individual events, they're a part of a team that's training with a coach that's helping, and they work together, and they're better together even when they're only performing by themselves, and which is why, you know, whenever you hear the speeches and, you know, people, you know, be, be communicating, you know, to the press after success in the Olympics, even the individual sports, what are they doing? They're like praising their other individual teammates and their coach and everything that was involved. We're better together than alone. Cooperation and, and teamwork really does enhance the performance and accomplishments of everyone else. The same is true for local churches. And we're going to see that in the Baptist Faith and Message, Article 14, we only have a couple more left to be going through the, the whole of the Baptist Faith and Message. There's 18 total, so we could do the math here. Uh, we've got a few left, and Lord willing, we'll, we'll finish here in, in a few months. But let's see the Baptist Faith and Message as it relates to cooperation right now. And point number one, the need for cooperation. Look with me at Baptist Faith and Message, Article 14, and the first part of it here. This is just the first section. Christ people should, as occasion requires, organize such associations and conventions as may best secure cooperation for the great objects of the kingdom of God. And as it relates to the sermon this morning on benefiting from the Discipleship Commission, I'm going to read the Great Commission again from Matthew 28. And I want us to take like a focus in on why this is so needed. If we just think about the Great Commission, why cooperation? Matthew 28 and, eight, and verse 18 says this. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of 
the age. Matthew 28, this great commission, this discipleship commission, is not done by any one church. It was never meant to be done by any one or few churches, but every faithful local church has this as their aim. This is the ball that's coming in that we want to make sure that we keep our eye on as we saw this morning. So, with this big task of reaching the nations, planting churches, teaching all that Christ has commanded, we better get on board with partnering with other churches because we couldn't do it on our own. This is so important that we would work together to promote these things, sending missionaries, training, planting churches, this is, which is what we do. We know that. We recognize that. We looked uh, in a sermon last year titled Gospel Motivated Partnerships, full sermon on the cooperative program. This kind of goes hand in hand with this article specifically. We do that. We're a Southern Baptist church. We're aware of that. Well, not everyone's aware of that, but I think it's good to be reminded of it. And there's a reason for it. We're better as a team than on our own. Same is true for the local church and the body building itself up. All the different parts and gifts, we need them all, everyone. There's no insignificant gifts in the church, right? We know that from, from Corinthians. All are needed. The public gifts are needed, but also the ones that aren't necessarily seen all the time are all also needed. Not, not one is better than the other, all needed. In a similar way, if we're going to hit that target, if we're going to keep our eye on the ball, it's really, really wise for us to cooperate with other local churches, which we're going to see in, in our second point. We're going to see some cooperation even in the New Testament as an example, but here on this point, just to say it's needed. It's needed. The world is a big place, and this very state is a big place. Multiple churches, multiple associations, Multiple entities, even in just our denomination, let alone all the other Bible-believing gospel denominations. There's more people still to be reached, even in our state. Of course, throughout the United States and then throughout the world, there's a lot of people that aren't even reached. There's a need for cooperation in team sports, yeah. But also, more importantly, in local churches and with Christian ministry with an aim to glorify God and make an impact throughout the world. We see that, right? It's there. It's clear. I hope that's one of the things that attracts you to a church like ours and a denomination like ours, that we might be able to have the kind of reach and impact that's just, there's just no comparing. It's just 47,000 estimated churches Conventions in most of our state, state conventions, if you've gone to a state convention, you know the Missouri Baptist Convention, for instance, a ton of people come to that and cooperate. There's a lot of stuff going on in this state, but that's true in all the other states as well. There's so much reach. We're going to get to that in a minute. Bob Phillips said that Southern Baptists realize the limitations of their own local church resources and understand that joining hands with other like-minded churches enables them to accomplish more together than they ever could alone. I think that's a good uh, place to end that point. Let's move to point number two. We saw the need for cooperation. Let's look at the nature of cooperation. Let's look at the next section of our Baptist Faith and Message, Article 14, and it goes like this. Such organizations have no authority over one another or over the churches, they are voluntary and advisory bodies designed to elicit, combine, and direct the energies of our people in the most effective manner. Members of the New Testament churches should cooperate with one another in carrying forward the missionary, educational, and benevolent ministries for the extension of Christ, Christ's kingdom. We've seen the need we're seeing the nature of what that is. Individual, uh, autonomous local churches 
cooperating together for the end of, of all of us keeping our eye on that great commission, discipleship commission goal. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 are a really, really good example of this, even in the New Testament, of other churches helping other churches and things and cooperating and things. There's others that we could look at, but here's just one. We know this, the generosity uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verses 1 to 5. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that was has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then, by the will of God, to us. Extreme poverty with a heart to help on their own accord. Do you see the voluntary nature of cooperation here in the churches of Macedonia? You see the generosity to, to partner and to support and to help? We see that. Only the gospel does that. Unbelievers, like I mentioned this morning, are benefiting from any of this, nor do they have hearts to give and things of that nature. The gospel does a work. This is, this is gospel-motivated giving, right? We, we can do a study, and someday, Lord willing, I think there's a series. I'm not a prophet. I think there's a series titled Gospel-Motivated Giving from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 to see the encouraging truth, such encouraging truth of, of, of believers partnering in giving. These this churches in Macedonia were not well off, but they wanted to help another church that was struggling. What is that but cooperation and partnership? That's, that's a great thing. We see that in the New Testament. This is not foreign to us. But as we saw in that sermon I had mentioned from last year, the cooperative program of the SBC, of the Southern Baptist Convention, you see churches voluntarily decide to partner, to pool together, giving resources, people resources, resources for the aim and task of fulfilling and and reaching out and, and that great commission. The denomination that we're a part of pool things together for international giving and the International Mission Board, for domestic giving and the North American Mission Board, church planting, church revitalization, state convention, the Missouri Baptist Convention. Our church participates in that, even gives towards that, three different offerings, but then a part of our giving goes to that as well which this gospel-motivated giving emphasis is that there is a need. We all need to be aware of that because our, our giving is for cooperation and helps in these ways, which is such a blessing. It's good to be aware of it. Our denomination has six seminaries, training up missionaries, church, worship, uh, ch- church workers, um, pastors, and the like. I benefited from going to one of them. Multiple colleges offering because of the pooling of, of resources, People can go to college and get education uh, in, in a more efficient and effective way with teachers that are provided for and tuition that's reasonable. Why? Because you got 47,000 approximately, 47,000 churches cooperating to do these things. You've got the ERLC. You've got local associations like the North Grand River Baptist Association that we, uh, uh, that we are involved in as a church and we've been involved in as well. There's other local ministries that come out of the state convention, for instance, like the Baptist Children's Home, supporting adoption and foster care and help with other local causes. There's a lot of great reach. I mean, First Baptist Church of Gallatin has done wonderful things since its inception, since it was started, many great things in, over the years. But there's, just, there's some things that we may not be able to do as a church because we just don't have some of the resources to do that. So the fact that we partner, we have connections with a Baptist children's home helping with adoption and foster care and trafficking and, and human trafficking and things of that nature here locally in our state that as a church we, we might not necessarily, I mean, there, there may be Christians called, I hope there are, to adoption and foster care and things of that nature even at our church. I hope there are and I know there have been in our church history and I hope there are into the future. But 
we can't do what the Baptist home does. We can't do what the six seminaries do. Uh, well, we can't do, um, so, but we can cooperate with them, and that's great. This is what cooperation is. We, we voluntarily come together to do something in the most effective manner. And I think the most effective manner, rather than just being lone rangers, doing our own thing, is our own local church, and that's it. <laughs> Nobody else, like, I don't care what you're doing. Church down the road, you're doing wonderful things, but I don't care about it because you're not a part of us, you know, or vice versa. We don't want that kind of thing, that, that territorial spirit. No, we want to cheer and rejoice when another local church is, is having success and growing. Why? Because we're all together for the gospel, and this is all wonderful for, for something to get behind. We don't need to just think that we're alone, and so that's what's helpful, I think, about this aspect of our um, church's doctrine is that we're able to um, work together in ways that are, that are helpful um, in, in ways that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do, or any church for that matter. Not just us, not just First Baptist Church. Every church would not be able to do all the things that we can do with cooperation. Herschel Hobbs, if you've heard of him, he's a famous Southern Baptist pastor of, of the past. He said this, in a sense, or is a sense of need for independent cooperation under the lordship of Christ in order to do the best work possible. that He's talking about this, right? So he's saying this is a sense of a need for independent cooperation under the lordship of Christ in order to do the best work possible in carrying out God's redemptive purposes in the world. That, that's the, the heart behind it, and I think that's helpful. We also do other cooperation here, as, as we see here, voluntary cooperation like benevolence, help with the ministerial alliance, which is encouraging. And we also partner um, with other local churches, and it's good for churches to just be aware of certain needs that come across their table, whether they're a part of a denomination or not. We, we could point out some of the obvious more recent examples of, of um, Abu Dhabi and Sam Parkinson and his family, and the fact that the only uh, Arabian Peninsula seminary available out there anywhere is the one that he's at, Gulf Theological Seminary, and we have a connection and a partnership with, with them to do great work. And then we can also talk about um, uh, other, other aspects of, of ministry, missions work, um, in, in, in giving, connecting, pooling resources to care and support uh, people in a variety of ways. We do this not because we have to, because someone twists our arm, but because we voluntarily engage in those things for God's glory and for the good uh, of, of his people and for the cooperating for that Great Commission task, which reaches out beyond our walls, as we saw this morning. This leads us to our last point, and number three. Uh, we saw the need for cooperation. We saw the nature of cooperation, and I didn't alliterate this because this last one is a different letter, but we'll just go with the limits of cooperation, finally, to see the end of Baptist Faith and Message, Article 14. What does it say? It says, Christian... Unity in the New Testament sense is spiritual harmony and voluntary cooperation for common ends by various groups of Christ's people. Cooperation is desirable between the various Christian denominations when the end to be attained is itself justified and when such cooperation involves no violation of conscience or compromise of loyalty to Christ and his word as revealed in the New Testament. We saw in Galatians 1, 6 through 9, we saw in Galatians re recently in that series, a kind of cooperation that the churches in Galatia were doing with false heretical teachers. We don't want that. I'm going to remind us here of Galatians now. This is not a kind of cooperate. That it, there's limits to cooperate. Just, it's come on, come all, let's all just cooperate here. We're going to see that. But let's be reminded here in Galatians what we saw. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say it again, if anyone is preaching you, to you, a gospel contrary to the one received, let him be accursed. False teachers, false gospels, those are not people that we want to cooperate with. Those are people that we want to warn about. 
We want to expose that kind of thing. The churches of Galatia, contrary to what they should have done, were partnering with these false teachers and accepting their false teaching and being influenced by them. But we should only cooperate with like-minded Christians who hold the gospel in common. We, if we're together for the gospel of them, we can cooperate. We need to disfellowship, though, on the other hand, and not cooperate with the Galatian heretics in that instance. Those leaders, no cooperations. And we will not cooperate as a church, for instance, with cults or other sects of religions that, that they just don't hold to the gospel. We, we can't do that. Why would we? Why would we want to? Charles Kelly, Richard Land, and Albert Moeller said this in their book on the Baptist Faith and Message. They said this Warning, what we just read, explains why Southern Baptists do not join ecumenical organizations and church councils, like these ecumenical councils and things. They said, we believe that true cooperation is grounded in a common commitment to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and in a common obedience to the Bible as the word of God. So this is really important because throughout church history, there's been a lot of heartache, problems, people hurt denominations split, um, falsehood taught because of cooperation, mixing with people that do not hold to the gospel. And then all of a sudden, those associations and those people are influencing Bible-believing, gospel-believing members, and it's just, it just hurts. What does it say when, when you cooperate in that, link arms in that? He says we're together in some sense. Now, we may differ on aspects of Maybe aspects of baptism, we may differ on certain uh, aspects of how, how we think about how the end of the world will happen and how we interpret the book of Revelation. We may differ on a variety of things amongst churches and still cooperate. But if the gospel foundation isn't there, we shouldn't be doing that. Why? Because when we do, it confuses the members of our church and it confuses the people we're partnering with. Think about what that says, the people we're partnering with. We say, hey, yeah, man. It's not that big of a deal. Sure, you don't believe in justification by God's grace through faith alone. Sure, you believe in a, another set of revelation in addition to the Bible. Oh, sure, you believe in another gospel uh, of works or something like that. But that doesn't really matter. We could, have, we could partner. and No, we want to partner with like-minded uh, churches. And I think that we do well to heed that warning here in the Baptist faith and message, not to go against conscience, not to compromise Loyalty to Christ and his word, that comes first. Even if there's a need, you can say, oh, that's heartless. There's this need. We can do this together. Why don't you do this? What's wrong with the need? Do you have a problem with the need? No, I don't have a problem with the need. But, but we're going to meet that need without going against conscience, without causing other problems. Just because there's a need before us doesn't mean that you add to it sinful partnerships and confusion and problems galore just for the sake of meeting the need with other people. No, you're careful here. This is why we're, we're careful. Uh, this is relevant for us as a church because I know these things have come up, and I know they will come up. So it's helpful to get together and see. There's some helpful clarifying things that I think are biblical that the Baptist faith and message puts forward, even limiting cooperation. The purity of the church is at stake with any association with unbelievers that confuses things. And we just have to be careful and we have to be wise. We have to be biblical. We have to act on conviction and conscience. And as a, uh, as a church that holds to the word of God, I think we, it's, it's good for us to care a lot about that and to make sure that we're partnering with people that are like-minded, which is why First Baptist Church of Gallatin, the cooperations we have in the Southern Baptist Convention, the cooperations we have in, in the Ministry Alliance, the cooperations we have that we have with other different people that we might support, are all vetted, and we're always considering, are we together for the gospel? Are we like-minded? Is this a good work? Can we get behind it? Do, do we want to put our time and energy resources behind it or not? And if not, uh, the reason, it, if not, it, it could be a lot of reasons, but one main reason might be because we're not together for the gospel. We, we must be. We must share that. I think this is a good warning for us. I think that's a good place for us to end as it relates to cooperation. We're better together as a team. Let's team up in this local church, with our gifts, with other local churches, for the glory of God. This is good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you've helped us with and shown us um, in 
our church's doctrinal position. Help us to be unified in the faith. Uh, and help um, others who are learning and engaging and, and wondering what we believe and why we believe. Help us all to, to come together, especially members of this church or people that are interested in becoming members of this church, that we would that we be together for the gospel. And we'd also be together just for what we believe is wise and what we believe scripture reveals so that you can cause unity in truth that will lead to better cooperation, better and more gospel ministry, that we can all keep our eye on the ball together for your glory and for the good of those around us. We say this in Jesus' name. Amen.